Okay, I'm gonna start wrong. Okay. 大家好，大家下午好。五个月以前我开始学中文，所以今天我想告诉你们我的故事。Hello everyone. Five months ago, I started learning Chinese. So today, I want to tell you my story. So firstly, I'm going to tell you why I started learning Mandarin, and then I'm going to tell you、um, what I've been doing the last five months, my journey in the last five months, and then finally, I'm going to end with some lessons I learned in the last five months. So why did I start learning Mandarin? Well, firstly, it's because I'm Chinese. So.、Um, <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm Chinese, and、uh, I never got taught Chinese when I was a kid. But being the only Chinese kid in my class, everyone thought I could speak Chinese. So I always wanted to learn, just because everyone thought I could speak Chinese.、Uh, when I got a bit older, it was because I felt like I wasn't Chinese because I met a lot of Chinese people, and they also thought I should be able to speak Chinese, even though I was born here. So it's kind of.、Um, Because I felt other people, other Chinese people, thought I should be able to speak Chinese, so I started to learn because of that. And lastly, I, I continued learning, not because I'm Chinese or not Chinese. I continued learning because I really, really enjoy learning a language, and the experience of the last five months has just been、um, amazing. So, like, just you know, traveling in China. I mean, I've been to China three times, and I wasn't able to speak a word of Chinese, and. It's just a depressing experience, especially when you look Chinese. And when I went to Shanghai three months ago, it was just amazing. Just being able to speak to the locals and make friends in the native language, just you know, another level. And finally, just because learning a language,、um, it's just taught me so much about learning in general and learning a new skill. It's just、um, you know, taught me so much just about learning in general.、Um, and I think it's just important to know why. You know, you're learning a language just because language is something you just you can't just Google when you know you're in the middle of a conversation. You need to to enjoy it all the time. So, you know, when you're having a conversation with someone, you know, you you have everything you need to have that conversation. So,、um, I'm gonna start with my story, which is、um, my target for for obviously learning Chinese is, is fluency. So this is gonna give you a rough idea of. How to get fluent in Mandarin? So, a thousand characters. People say you know understand ninety percent of the characters in the newspaper. Two thousand characters is ninety five percent of the characters in the newspaper, and three thousand is, is over ninety nine percent of the characters in the newspaper. Now, this isn't really a direct representation of how fluent you can get, because when you get to three thousand characters, you can you're you're recognised ninety percent of the characters, but Chinese is actually made out of words that. Can be made up from one to four characters, so you may recognise the characters, but you might not actually understand the newspaper at all.、Um, so just to illustrate this,、uh, I just want to go through a Chinese sentence. So the top is how it's pronounced in in Pinyin, which is like the Roman Romanisation of Chinese. So you're using the English alphabet. <coughs> so this this、um, sentence is: 目前全国经济形势很好 and If you just know the characters and how it's translated, this is the、um, direct translation. So I before whole country scriptures help shape power very good. Obviously, that doesn't make any sense. So you might think, okay, so if I try and rearrange the words and try and make it make sense, you might get something like reading the scriptures of the past helps make the whole country very powerful. And you'd be wrong. So. These words here that I've highlighted in colours, these are characters that create words. So you, to understand the sentence, you need to understand that "mu qian" means currently, "jing ji" means economy or economics, and "xin shi" means situation. So can anyone tell me what you think that sentence might mean after you know those、uh, those words? And this is the direct translation from each character. Anyone? <laughs> so it means currently. So this means whole and country. So currently, the whole country, Jingji means economy. So the currently the whole country's economy, Xin Shi means situation, and Han Han means very good. So the whole country's economy, economic situation is very good. So 
even if you do know 3,000 characters, you need to know maybe 10,000 words, which are a combination of these characters. Um, so that's what I'm trying to aim for, hopefully, by the end of the year or something, as soon as possible, basically. Okay, so what have I been doing so far? So you need about 3,000 characters to understand 99% of the newspaper. In the last five months, I've probably learned about 1,000 characters, um, give or take, and maybe maybe 12 or 1,300 words, which is a combination of all the characters, um, on top of the grammar and learning sentences and stuff like that. So this is what I've been doing for the last five months. So I started with just learning loads and loads of vocabulary, um, because I've tried to learn Chinese in the past, and it just hasn't gone very well, because if I know, like, 20 characters and I try and have a conversation with someone, I can't even, I can't even begin to say sentences wrong, because I just don't have the vocabulary to just even say anything I want to. I just sit there speaking English because I can't figure out what to say. So in the first month, I was just drilling vocabulary using um, any method I could. It was mainly flashcards, but I probably got about four or 500 characters in the first month, which, um, which gave me a good foundation, but I just didn't really know any sentences. So using that vocabulary I learned in the first month, um, in the second month I just started having as many conversations as I could. So I was going on these language learning websites where you just kind of, um, you just you can talk to native speakers basically. So there's one called Live Mocha and one called iTalkI and you just go on these websites and you just look for other native speakers and you do language exchanges. So I teach them English and they teach me Chinese and you just generally have a conversation with them. So at the beginning in the second month I was having like literally five minute conversations. Like I'll say who I am, where I'm from, what age I am, what work do I do, what my hobbies are. And this lasts about five minutes because sometimes you can't even understand what they're replying back to you. So you're literally just, you're, you're kind of telling a speech for about five minutes. And this went on for like the whole month. Like this is the whole of um, December. I was just doing this as much as I could. And for this whole month, my conversations were about five to ten minutes long, even by the end of the month it was about five to ten minutes long. And I was just like, where am I going? This isn't going anywhere. And in the beginning of the third month, I had um, a breakthrough. Like, uh, I was doing the same thing I was doing every, every day, just trying to speak to people. And in the third month, I, just, I was talking to this person from Taiwan, and I suddenly had this 45 minute conversation, and it just jumped from, from ten minutes to like 45 minutes, with 99% in Chinese. And I was just like, what's going on? Like, how did it go from just 10 minute conversations to suddenly a 45 minute conversation where I was having a proper conversation with someone and, you know, I just didn't really think about using English. And I think this is where beginners get it wrong. When you're starting out, you try and move too quickly. You try and learn as much vocabulary and sentences and grammar as you can. And you don't get fluent in the fundamentals, which is obviously you know, where you're from, what you do and everything around that, so if, they, if you can discuss your hobbies and you can say, I don't know, I skateboard or something like that, and they ask you a question about it and you can answer about it, you can talk about it some more, you can digress about your own hobbies, so you can you understand your, your fundamental vocabulary, which would may only be like 500 words, which is all I knew at the time. So that's really important that you can just understand the basics of the language, even if you're, you just become fluent in the basics. And that can still be called fluency because you're just having a smooth conversation with someone. Um, so at the end of the third month, I went to Shanghai, which was like a really big test to me. And um, it went really, really well. Like I was quite confident just having that 45 minute conversation with someone. And I, I was having a, a couple more conversations before I went to Shanghai. But um, I was doing everything in Chinese because of the last three months. So it was just an amazing experience just being able to socialize in the native language and you know be able to survive out there in, in Chinese. So in just in those two weeks my my fluency just got a lot higher. Like before I maybe I knew like about five hundred words. I still only knew maybe like six or seven hundred words after Shanghai. But because I had to use those words all the time, I you know, they're all at the front of your mind. So whenever you're having a conversation with someone you can use this vocabulary that you've learned over the last few months. So that was really important for me. Um, to get that kind of immersion experience. So now where I am, I'm, I'm five months in, um, and I'm pretty comfortable with having a basic conversation. Like I can talk to someone for a whole evening, um, just about things that I know about and things I'm interested about. 
so I'm pretty comfortable with that. Um, so now I've gone from Skype exchanges to real life meetups, which is obviously like the exact situation that you'll be using a language in. Like if you're in the country, you're speaking to people out there in the country um, face to face, and you'll be in that situation where you can't back out of it. You've just started this conversation with someone. You can't just be like, you know, on Skype sometimes I'll be like, I'm going for dinner, you know, see you later, because I just have nothing to say to them anymore. <laughs> So um, this is the exact situation where you just can't back out. You're in a face-to-face -face situation, and even if you've got, even if it's just a, a um, like a coffee, coffee date or something like that, you know, you you can't just up and leave um, unless you know, unless you're really a dickhead. But <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and I think this is this is where I want to like this is the next step for me because I mean it's much more enjoyable than than Skype just looking at my computer screen for you know, an hour having a conversation with one, just having, you know, getting to know people and just learning at the same time. So I think my, the, the only thing I need to look out for is that because I can communicate on a basic level now, I've got to actually actively increase my vocabulary because I can pretty much express anything I want just in a really roundabout way, like maybe using like four sentences instead of one because I don't know how to express myself. So that, yeah, that's what I've been in the last five months. So. Um, now I'm going to talk about a few lessons I've learned in the last five months. So if any of you guys want to pick up a language, um, this isn't Mandarin specific. This is just things I've learned about learning a language. So the first one is um, you need to enjoy the process of learning. So like I said that I started because, because I'm Chinese, and then I continued because people thought I wasn't Chinese. But then I ended up realizing that you know the whole process is just amazing. It's, like, it's just like anything. If you're going to go to the gym and, you know, get ripped or you know learn how to play a musical instrument or learning how to program you just need to enjoy the experience or you're just not going to get very good very quickly and this is really really important because uh, for my next point which is the more often you learn the faster you faster you learn um, this is a quote by this really um, really famous language learner it's just you don't learn a language you get used to it because like I said about um, learning like a musical instrument or learning to code, you're going to forget what you know really quickly. So if you only have four hours a week to learn a language, you should be doing it every day for half an hour rather than four hours on a Saturday because if you do it for four hours on a Saturday, you've got six days to forget all the stuff you learn on that Saturday. And um, you can just generally learn quicker with the language if you, if you just do it every day. Um, okay. Next point is... Tight feedback loops help you learn faster. So an example of this is if you have um, a language teacher and she asks you to create a sentence using this new word that you've learned. <coughs> so you, you make this sentence and she can tell you, tell you immediately whether you've got it right or wrong and how to say it correctly and also other, other sentences you've got to come up with. So you've thought for yourself how to use this word and she's told you how to do it right and some example sentences so you, you know immediately what you've got or what got it wrong. And I think this is really important because I think in traditional education, when you, when you learn a language especially, um, you might do homework once a week or you might, you know, yeah, you do homework once a week and you've got an exam like every term. But you need these, that feedback straight away to learn quickly. Otherwise, you just learned this thing a week ago, you've done the homework, and then a week later when it's been marked, you've already forgotten everything you've written. You need to like... You need to reread what you've written to know what you've gone wrong, and that's just just not efficient straight away. So, especially when you're self-studying a language, you can. This is where you have an advantage over traditional methods of learning. You can just you can use flashcards, and this is what SRS is, um, space repetition software, where it just kind of it gives you it gives you like um, a Chinese word, and then you can tell it what the translation is, and then you can immediately know whether you've got it right or wrong. And then if you've got it right, it can space it for you know, a month's time, and if you've got it wrong, it'll be, you know, a space of four in 30 seconds' time or a day's time, depending on how well you know that word. Um, so I think this is really important for, for learning, just um, testing yourself all the time, using flashcards and using something that you, you know immediately whether you got it right or wrong, not just reading a book or just, you know, things where you're just, you're not getting feedback on what you, you've done. Uh, next is... Do what keeps you motivated. Like, about two months in, I think, 
I started to get bored with my, my learning routine. Like I was just doing flashcards a lot just to learn words and it was just getting me really, really tired out and that's when I switched to um, talking a lot more because I had a, a much larger vocabulary and I could actually use what I've learned, not just stare at my iPhone and do flashcards all day trying to learn this vocabulary. And I think this, this above else mm, it tops anything else on this list because you just need to do learn a language as often as you can. So if you're not motivated to do it, there's just, it doesn't matter what method you use, you just need to know, just need to be motivated and enjoy what you're doing, otherwise you're just not going to do it right. Um, yeah. Next is um, thinking your target language. So this might sound harder than it really is, and when someone told me to do this I was like, are you joking? I know like 500 words, how can I think in Chinese? And it's, but it's easier than you, and you think it is. So it starts with just linking your native language. So things you do every day, like, um, I don't know, um, when you're at work and you say something to a colleague, you think about the sentence you just said in your native language, and then you try and translate that into Chinese or any target language that you're trying to learn. And even if you got it wrong, you just you try and you, you go to your teacher or you go onto I don't know, Google Translate or something, and you, you figure out how you set to say it right. And if you do this every day, so you might say the same sentence or think about the same sentence every time you come into work. You've done this ten times now, and you'll begin to just think about it, and it'll just be it'll just be that at the tip of your mind. You know, you, you might not even think about it in English first. You might think about it in your target language. So this is what happened in Shanghai. Like I was doing these things every day, like ordering the same thing from the same restaurant, or asking my friends if they wanted to go out and you know go to this bar or something like that. And I, you know, there was times when I was speaking to my English friends that went out with me there, and they would ask me a question and I just replied to them in Chinese without realizing that they didn't understand Chinese. And then, and then other times I'd actually have to think about, I thought about it in Chinese first and then I have to translate it back into English, even though like, my Chinese you know, is you know, not nowhere near a native level. So it was just, if you're doing that all the time, you'd keep on translating for your native language and you'll eventually just start to think in, your, in that target language, you know, even if it's just a small amount of what you do every day. And then you build that up every single day and that helps you to learn new sentences and do the things that you want to do every day in English but in your target language. And um, my last lesson was speak, speak early, speak often. Um, language is just about communication, right? And speaking is the easiest and quickest and the most enjoyable for me anyway of learning a language. You know, you'll learn this language to speak to people, you're not learning, well, most people are not learning this language to, you know, write an essay in this language or, you know, to, to, to write a novel like this. It's, uh, it's the quickest way to learn language because you're getting, this is what I was talking about, about tight feedback loops. You're getting instant feedback. If you've said a, com a sentence completely wrong, the native speakers are going to look at you like, what are you talking about? And you'll know instantly you got it wrong and they can help you to say it right and maybe, you know, give you some other sentences that you can use. So, just speaking, like you can, you can forget almost all this other stuff. If you, if you've got like a beginner level of the language and you start speaking to someone, all of this other stuff kind of falls away. You can just this, this kind of stuff is all, you know. For me, it keeps me motivated because I love speaking to people and communicating with people. You think in your target language because you're speaking to them and you need to be speaking in that target language. So you're automatically thinking it. You're getting tight feedback loops because. You know, they're telling you instantly whether you got it right or wrong, and you, you know if you got it completely wrong because they're not going to stand you. And obviously, you know, the other two as well, I think, also included in this speak early, speak often. And uh, so, if you take any, any one thing away from this, I would say that's the number one thing to do. Uh, thanks. Um, these are some blogs, um, my own blog, which I, I blog about Chinese, and these three are are quite language agnostic kind of blogs if you if you want to start learning your own languages. Um, so if anyone wants to actually learn Mandarin, they can talk to me, but these are quite good if anyone wants to learn any kind of language. Thank you. Anyone have any questions? Yeah, do your uh, parents speak Mandarin? Oh, they do. They have um, a decent level of Mandarin, but their, their English is actually better than their Chinese now. Um, and they also speak several of the dialects, which meant that they actually speak those dialects more than Mandarin. So in Malaysia, they, they speak the, these other dialects to their parents and their friends, and Mandarin is just learned at school rather than as their first language. 
Um, I have recently, but the the accent is really strong. It's really a strong Malaysian accent, like to the point where sometimes I can't even understand what they're talking about. But yeah, it does help to, to speak to them too. Oh, very very different. So in the north, they have a really strong like um, roll, like a heavy tongue they call it, and where they kind of like. So if I say um, Beijing, Beijing in English, right? Be Beijing is how you say it in standard Mandarin, and Beijing people will say like Be Beijing. It's like that Beijing, like that really strong, like rolling of the R sort of thing. And then in the south, they 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 drop things like H's. So Shi means to be in Mandarin. Uh, in the north, they say Shi. In the south, they sometimes say Su. They just drop the H and they just don't. Just, they just lose that pronunciation of it, um, or it's very, very soft. So it's, uh, it's per region, it's sometimes really difficult to understand, um, especially when you're a beginner. They only understand characters, not words. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, so the. Uh, they're actually, I, I don't think the browsers even think about words at all, but there are some software that it doesn't kind of know which words they are, but sometimes you'll have like two words next to each other, they're two characters, and then the middle two are actually could make a word, and that might be the actual word that you want but in that sentence, but the computer can't recognize that, dependent on um, you know, the sentence, because you you, it might be both ways are right, so I think it's too difficult to distinguish.